Film Courage, the radio show, and we just finished a great episode with Tulsa, Oklahoma filmmakers, Oklahoma Award, and Nicole Alonzo, and we had our friend Nick Murphy in studio with us, also a filmmaker, How you doing? Spoon Pictures, and um, just curious what your take was from being in the studio, live radio, connecting with kindred spirits across the country. How was this for you? Uh, I think it was the shit. Um, <laughs> uh, no, it, it was great. It was really, really awesome. I felt uh, finally kind of like, I, I was like, this is must be how Kevin and Bean feel in, uh, on K-Rock. Because um, like, you're sitting there with the headphones, you can hear everything. It's just like, you guys are there, but yet I hear you like very clearly, and I hear them over, it was, it was amazing. I, I, I really love how uh, internet radio is probably where the future is going. Um, as far as radios goes, because everything is, everything segueing into downloadable, me uh, downloadable media, and it was really awesome to, to connect with uh, two filmmakers, uh, two very uh, passionate and dedicated filmmakers who I probably never really got a chance to meet, without without that stuff, and to sit with two awesome talented people as well. So that was very cool. Yeah, from the interview, there were a lot of things that I, I took away from today's interview, one of which was how, you know, filmmaking, there there's a lot of sacrifices. And, um, you know, David and I have experienced that. And so I really connected with what they were talking about um, as far as, you know, having to be frugal and, and, you know, not accept certain social engagements and things. Were there things in today's interview that really struck out at you, like that you really identified with? Uh, yeah, I was really impressed with the fact that he got a girlfriend doing that because I've been doing that for years and they're like, wait, you don't make any money? Okay. Um, no, but I, 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 I think it's great. Uh, it is a sacrifice, you know, it really is. And you got to really want to do that. And these, the, these guys, uh, have definitely sacrificed, uh, so much, and so it 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 struck a chord with me. And, and, and fortunately, besides us, oh, and this is not to talk bad about anybody, but unless you live that lifestyle, a lot of people don't understand that. You know, to them, they don't quite understand why you make that personal sacrifice. You know, for myself, when I was 18, I, I moved, you know, 2,000 miles away from friends and family, and didn't know anybody out here. You know, and that was my sacrifice, is being that far away from everyone um, and, and trying to, you know, struggle every day and do the best you can. So, yeah, so I really related to a lot of what they were talking about. It's true all over, you know. It's hard out here to be a filmmaker. Another thing that Oklahoma and Nikki talked about in today's interview was that, you know, it is hard to find an audience and also an audience that... Um, <coughs> will support you both emotionally and financially um, and and we talked about social media and you know it's a it's a tricky thing because you want to promote yourself but you don't want to be so aggressive that you turn people off you know and um, I'm just curious what you took from what they were talking about as far as getting an audience someone that will you know maintain and stay with you and and actually back you and purchase your films and also the topic of social media um, building an audience is, uh, I mean, I, I think you brought up a lot of valid points when he was talking about how there's like, one filmmaker had 15,000 followers, but out of those 15,000 people, maybe only 200 would actually buy or watch the film. Um, I think that's a valid, valid point, but my, um, I think what I would like to add on to that, just from, from my experience, and people, this is my opinion, you can take away, you like and leave the rest, is that's 200 more people than you would have reached otherwise. And maybe those 200 people, out of those, they'll maybe tell somebody else, I just saw this great movie. You know, it is, it is word of mouth. Um, so numbers, I mean, I, I think filmmaking, what we're trying to do, at least what, what I'm trying to do, is just make a film, first and foremost, and then the audience will come when you put it out there. You know, like it's, I'm making a story for, for, for them. This is, this is my story. You know, do you like it, do you not like it? And if they do, they're going to stick with you. You know, like, it is sad that, that we live in a world where we're so disconnected from each other because of social media. Uh, it's a huge disconnect from actually talking to people. And, um, 
but on the flip side of that, I feel that we're making films to reach people. And as long as you reach one person, that person will follow you. That will be your diehard fan at the end of time. And you should ignore those 200 people just because the 14,800 people didn't buy your film. And so I think that there's a flip side uh, to, to both, and you should certainly look in the positive as well. You know, and uh, but he's right. It, it is a it, it's a tough market to find a kind of build an audience. And for myself, I don't think I've ever like charged to, to watch one of my films. I just can't do it. <laughs> it's just like you should just watch this for free and enjoy it. You know, I just I feel awkward saying, "Here, here give me your ten dollars to watch this movie." You know. Because um, if it sucks, they're going to want that $10 back, and then I won't be able to eat that night. <laughs> uh, man, self-deprecation. Well, I think, too, a lot of us um, have kind of subscribed to that starving artist mentality. I know Dee Wallace talked about that last week, and a lot of us identify money as like, oh, it's evil, and we think of Goldman Sachs and all this greed and stuff that's happened in the last few years that's kind of maybe put us where we are economically as a country right now. And so I think it's hard for us to to ask for mm. something. You know, mm -hmm. it just feels weird to us, and we don't like it when other people do it, so we don't feel okay about doing it ourselves. Right, and and for Pizza and Bullets, like, it was the first movie that I made where I did a crowdfunding campaign. I never did that before, and I never had to ask anyone for help making a movie. It always come out of pocket. Um, but it, it was the type of movie where I knew that couldn't happen this time. It would just be be no way to do that so you know um, at the end of the day we're all struggling in some way or another and it is a tough time right now uh, but you're right it, it's a uh, it's just a thing where people think well I'd love to but you know I'll do it next week or, or I think a lot of people just kind of putting it off or they don't have it because something else will come in and, and affect them so it's it's hard to build an audience and it's, it's definitely hard to raise money um, so uh, you know it's uh, it's a struggle so, I did my Debbie Downer spiel. I came up with all of the, the, the problems. What are, what are the answers? I, I don't think I personally have any answers. I don't have my experience. Um, uh, I definitely uh, agree with, with what you and David do and what, what um, Tulsa and Nicole do, do which is uh, the personal sacrifice is, is part of the answer uh, to keep pushing forward. Um, I think the answer is just to keep going and um, to make a film that is going to fit inside the budget that you can raise. So if your movie only costs four hundred dollars, then go out and make a four hundred dollar movie. You know, I've certainly done plenty of those, and what those are great for, especially the, the shorter ones, um, is you can make all your mistakes on those films and become a better storyteller with each one. So I think the answer is just don't think that you need to have ten thousand dollars to make this movie or a hundred thousand dollars to make this movie just go make the movie and, and make it fit to what you do have don't think about what you don't have like I don't have this so I just won't make it think about well you know I think this movie could fit or this story could fit what I do have oh I have access to this I'll just go over here and, and film in this location because I know I can get that for free you know I, I, I think the, the answer is to just uh, keep your options open and to be your own um, your own uh, self resource, you know, and, and kind of find that from within and just tailor your story to what you have as opposed to what you don't. Have.